Hi, I'm Barry List of Informs, and you're watching the latest in an online series about the best ways that your organization can use analytics. This segment is devoted to identifying opportunities for analytics. Our guest today is Brenda Dietrich of IBM. Dr. Dietrich is an IBM Fellow and Vice President, CTO of Business Analytics. Brenda, thanks for joining us. Thank you. IBM has been a leader in the analytics movement. Tell us a bit about your role at IBM in relation to analytics. Well, I've been at IBM essentially all of my adult life, and for much of my career, I worked in the IBM Research Division, where we invented new analytics methods and new applications of analytics. During that time, my clients included IBM itself as a large manufacturing company, and as a large software company, and then eventually as a large services company. And it also included a number of IBM's clients, really across all industries. More recently, I've moved over to a products group with IBM, where I look after the technical strategy around business analytics, our acquisitions, and our internal development. Let's talk about identifying opportunities to use analytics. How can an organization jumpstart its first use of analytics? Jumpstarting, which to me means getting impact fast, requires that you start in a place where you already have enough data to begin to do analysis and enough understanding of the relationship between actions and outcomes. Because early on you want to achieve impact through making better decisions. And the way to do this is to use the data you have available about decisions or actions that were taken in the past and the outcomes they achieved and start to tease out of this data, out of this data um, correlations. Perhaps causality if you're lucky, but more likely correlations between desirable outcomes or undesirable outcomes and actions that you could take under various circumstances. And then you start to essentially reinforce the good decisions, the good actions, by doing more of them. Um, in most cases, this leads to better overall performance, generates um, savings or profit that you can then invest in the next round of analytics within your company. Let's look at some corporate areas in analytics. What is strategic alignment and how can an executive get a fast start using analytics? Strategic alignment is about making sure that from the the very high levels of the company where much of the long range planning and strategic decision making is done, all the way down to the operations done by thousands or perhaps hundreds of thousands of people, that there's consistency in working toward the same outcomes. So setting a strategy and publishing a strategy is a first step. But then the next step is understanding how individual actions, individual decisions, whether they're around pricing or around production or around customer outreach, how each of these contributes to the overall goal of the corporation, to the strategy itself. And essentially monitoring the impact of these decisions, again, under different circumstances, understanding which contribute toward reaching the strategic goals and which don't, and moving the company to an environment where more and more of the decisions are in support of the strategic goals. What are some of the ways that you can use analytics to gain customer insight? Well, there's two extreme cases in how analytics can be used for customer insight. The first that we often think of is focus groups or detailed surveys. These tend to generate relatively small but highly, highly significant data sets because they're very focused on the question being answered. So small amount of highly relevant data, highly relevant actionable data, but they're expensive and they take time, and sometimes if you don't know the question you're asking ahead of time, you risk investing the time in gathering the data and finding it's not actually insightful. At the other extreme, we have absolutely massive amounts of data about how our customers use our products, how they shop for our products, how they feel about our products as they communicate with their friends via blogging, via tweeting, et cetera. And we, um, we also have information about how they view competitors' products, similar products provided by another company. So this is massive amounts of data, but it's, it's lower quality. It has a very high noise to signal ratio. So in this case, one has to invest a lot in the analysis, processing, filtering, sorting, um, study of the data to begin to gain insight. And what I generally recommend is that actually both methods be applied that you start with the readily available inexpensive data, tease out of it what you can, 
and act based on the signal that you're able to, to find there. But then in places where you need, you need deeper data, deeper understanding, that's where to invest the time in surveys or focus groups. Finance, risk, and fraud are all amenable to analytics. What is the role of analytics here? Well, risk, by definition, is about understanding the variability in a system. And it's about looking at the unlikely but potentially catastrophic or significant events. And it's about understanding the connection between an unlikely event in one part of the system and ramifications or impact in another part of the system. And additionally, it can be about understanding mitigating actions one can take place to stop the propagation of the problem or to recover from it. So that being said, it's highly amenable to both analysis of data and exploration of um, information that isn't yet data. And by that I mean scenarios or hypotheses about what could happen. It often requires building a simulation model or other probabilistic model to let you do the propagation of the unlikely event from one part of the system to another part and to understand the impact of actions. So it can also be extremely computationally intensive to study risk. Fraud, on the other hand, is really more about um, understanding the trade-off between letting something bad happen and prevent and slowing down the process by which normal business is done. So, for example, I don't think we would like it if, a, if every credit card transaction took five minutes to approve. I don't think we'd like it if every time we tried to swipe our credit card for a $5 purchase, we had to show three forms of ID. But there'd be a lot less credit fraud if that was the way it worked. So it's this trade-off between false positives and false negatives. And much of the opportunity in fraud is not in methods to recover from fraud, but in preventing it on the front end. And so again, this is a place where uh, a great deal of data about past transactions, about which ones turned out to be fraudulent, and putting intelligence in the system to filter out things which have a high enough probability of being fraudulent that you're willing to invest the extra time to investigate them before approving the transaction. Optimization is a term that has a narrow and a broader meaning. Perhaps you could explain what optimization means to business and how analytics offers assistance. Well, since I'm trained as a mathematician, I have to start by explaining what optimization means to a mathematician. Um, optimization to a mathematician means finding the absolute best answer to the model as presented. However, the model as presented is most likely an approximation of the actual system understudied. So mathematicians find exact answers to approximate problems. In business, we're going sort of the other direction. We're working on the real problem, not on, a, on, not on an abstraction or an approximation of it. But because we need answers quickly, and because the real problem tends to be much more complex than is amenable to the, the lovely theoretical mathematics we understand, we have to settle for approximate solutions to it. In general, in business, optimization means doing the best you can with the available resources. And one of those resources is, in fact, the time available to make the decision. Finally, with all of us being deluged by more information, how can analytics help? Well, we in the operations research arena tend to think of analytics as something that operates primarily on structured data, on numbers, on fields that we exactly know the meaning of. There's another large branch of um, analysis of data that has to deal with unstructured data, text, documents, spoken word, images. And um, tremendous progress is also being made in that field. And in fact, some of the most interesting work being done is really helping to understand, given a question, which of the available data is most relevant and most insightful to the answer to that question. And if you think back to the computer that played Jeopardy about a year and a half ago now, much of the work that went into that was in understanding the words in the question and understanding the words in the various documents and picking the ones that were the most relevant, most likely to help find the appropriate answer. Thanks, Brenda Dietrich of IBM. And thank you for watching this quick take on analytics from INFORMS, the Institute for Operations Research and the Management Sciences. For more information, visit us on the web 
at www.informs.org. Thank you.